did you know that the job of the consumer is to make themselves appear as though they're less motivated than they actually are to the salesperson? Have you ever walked into, say, a shoe store and the salesperson asked you, may I help you? And you said, no, I'm just looking, even though your intentions were absolutely to buy shoes. But for some reason, the fear of being pressured to do what we weren't ready to do by the salesperson, we just kind of told a little white lie and said, we're just looking. But of course, 20 minutes later, we're up at the counter buying our shoes. Is it possible that your prospects are doing exactly the same thing and causing you to think, man, none of my prospects are doing anything. They're all down the road. They're all waiting. None of them are ready to do anything right now. Maybe just maybe they're making themselves appear that way just as we do when we're the consumer. Hi again, I'm James McDonald with Agent Lead to Close and I'm here with another tip for all of the subscribers of Agent Inner Circle. And what I want to talk about is this reality. I work with many, many realtors who suffer from this idea that all of my leads are down the road. None of them want to do anything right now. But it flies in the face of reality, which is that if we look on the MLS, you can clearly see there are plenty of transactions that are happening all the time. Are there as many as we'd like? Perhaps not, but lots and lots of transactions. People are actually buying and selling real estate all the time. And realtors with the identical leads that you're getting, or at least from the same sources, some of them are actually converting those leads and doing tremendous sales volume every week, every month, every year with the various. So what is the difference? What I want to talk about today are some really helpful tips to wrap your mind around and test to, to reveal that there's often a lot more motivation there than you might think. Starting with tip number one, when the prospect says no, we can believe them. But if the prospect says anything other than no, we got to ask ourselves why. Now, let me put this in real world context to you all. Are you considering a move in the next little while? No. You can believe them. Well, not really. Well, we're just looking. Now we're thinking about it. Here's my number one tip. Anything other than no, pretend is yes. Don't get pushed off the puck. Don't get sidetracked. Okay? If it was no, the prospect would just say no. I always like to use the example, if I got a phone call randomly and someone said, yes, would you be interested in purchasing jousting sticks? I wouldn't say, well, you know, I'm kind of thinking about it, but not really. No. It'd be a no. The answer is no, because it's no. But if I don't say no, why? Are you thinking about a move? Are you considering a move in the next little while? If the answer was no, the easiest thing is to just say no. But if they're not saying no, you got to ask yourself why that is. And I'll tell you why. It's because they are considering it, but you're a salesperson. So they don't want to just jump up and say, yes, you got me. They're not going to do that. They're going to disguise it as a not really just looking. We're thinking about it. Maybe later, maybe sometime down the road. If it was a no, they would say no. That's number one. Okay, now understand this. The prospect assumes pressure from the salesperson. So what we want to do is we want to ask questions that don't assume that they're moving. We want to ask questions in a hypothetical manner. So next time, instead of asking, you know, where are you where are you looking to move to instead we want to word the question if you were to make a move where do you think you might go would you stay here locally in the area or might you move to a different area or perhaps even out of the state altogether we ask it in a hypothetical way that doesn't assume that they're doing anything thus Re releasing the pressure or at least diminishing the pressure so that the prospect doesn't feel like you're assuming that they're moving that's when they start to push back the other way, okay? So any question that we ask you, ask in a hypothetical, not where are you moving, but if you were to move, right? If you did decide to make a move, when do you think that might be? We want to ask our questions in this kind of hypothetical tone so we're not assuming that they're doing something that they haven't told us they are, okay? Next, we want to have really good offers when we detect and reveal motivation from our prospect, whether they're looking to buy or sell or both, and we detect that motivation. What we want to understand is this. The offer to get an appointment 
cannot be about buying a home or selling their home because they may not be ready to do that today. So if our offer is, when can we get together so we can go buy a home today? If that's what they're getting out of it, if that's what they're, you know, they're uh, sort of um, reading into with your offer, they're going to decline it way more often than not. Because although they might be looking, they're not ready to buy. And if we say, when can I come over and list your home? We're not ready to list our home just yet. We're gathering information. Remember, buying and selling real estate is a process, not an event. Starts with gathering information. So tip, next tip. When you make your offer, understand the offer for buyers is to help them look for a home, not buy one. When we get together with them, we can show them how we're going to help them buy one. But to get the appointment in the first place, our offer is about helping you look. You're already looking now. We can help you look in a better way. The seller offer is not about listing your home and selling your home. It's helping you prepare to one day sell your home. And if you can frame your offers in that way, again, why? It alleviates the pressure of the salesperson. The assumption of the consumer is you're going to pressure me into listing my home or buying a home, and I ain't ready for that. So I'll decline. If you can remove that pressure and make it clear this appointment is nothing to do with you selling your home today or buying a home today, this is preparation, good information you're going to get a whole lot more appointments. And then what you're going to be saying to me is this, man, these leads are way better than I thought they were. That's right. Because it turns out that the leads themselves have raised their hands, they've asked for information, and they've given up their anonymity to get it because there's likely some motivation there. All we're doing is we're trying to reveal what their timing and motivation actually is so that we can book an appointment when appropriate. And now... The more appointments you have, we start cooking with grease. More appointments on a monthly, weekly, and eventually daily basis, you're going to have a lot more clients. You're going to make a lot more income. I hope you got some good information here from our little tip. Stay tuned for more. Make sure you're subscribed, of course, to Agent Inner Circle. And again, I'm James McDonald with Agent Lead to Close. And this kind of thing that we're talking about right here, better converting your leads, is so critical to your real estate success. I get it. You invest tons of money and tons of time into generating leads. But if you don't, gener if you don't invest any effort or time or resources into converting those leads, you're going to be left very disappointed thinking these leads I'm buying um, are not what I thought. Maybe I should, you know, go on to the next shiny object. Wrong. Invest a little bit in conversion systems and conversion skills, and all of a sudden, the very leads you've been getting are gold. So, agentleadtoclose.com, check us out. It's pay as you play. We'll help you, and look forward to the next tip on Agent Inner Circle. In the meantime, I'm James McDonald. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye now.